Hello and welcome back to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined by Mark Oswald, who is a strategist at ADM. Mark, Theresa May, is she going to stay or is she going to go? Um, I think it's a lesser case of is she going to stay or is she going to go. I mean, she probably should have resigned immediately after the debacle that was the election. <laughs> the question now is this. Um, well, there, there are two issues here. Is Theresa May the problem in terms of the Brexit negotiations? And the answer is no, she's not. Mm -hmm. um, why is there this? Are there these rumblings on the backbench? Is it because of that rather shambolic speech? Um, even though, in content terms, if anyone read that speech yes. without all the interruptions and the coughing, um, you'd actually see it was a much stronger speech than the one she made at the conference last year. However. Uh, the, the issue here is rather more, um, you know, until the Conservative Party can actually unite itself behind a Brexit negotiation stance, then it doesn't really matter who the leader is. The issue is they need to get round that. Now, it appears from the noises off stage, and it's always noises off stage in this particular case, uh, that the Conservatives, uh, that the, the majority of Conservative MPs do not want to unseat Mrs May. Largely, I think, because the same constraint that's been there the whole time is still there. If someone else took over, would it improve? And the answer is clearly not. Yeah. Nevertheless, it is a reminder that the political risks for Sterling um, are still very much there. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen that, obviously, Sterling are coming, coming under some modest pressure. It would be rather greater pressure if we got to a situation where the economic data, which has been mixed, I think is the best way of saying yes. it, we've, we've had some reasonable retail sales numbers, the manufacturing sector seems to be doing well, but it's a small part of the economy. Construction rather worrying at yes. the moment. Um, trade also not exactly wonderful. But were we to see a situation where the Bank of England felt it was going to back off in November, then with sterling, um, and this is always important, the net positioning in sterling, Last week when we had the uh, commitment of traders data from the CFTC showed the first net long in sterling in a very, very long time. And that basically tells you where the balance of risk, for, risk lies. Unlike earlier in the year where there was a colossal short, there is now a small, very modest long. But it does leave sterling vulnerable because there's no one actually particularly short of it um, in overall terms. And therefore, if the news doesn't improve, um, and particularly if the Bank of England doesn't deliver, and even then, as of the point I've made before, maybe the Bank of England, if it does raise rates in November, is one and done, in which case, as soon as that becomes clear, sterling comes again under pressure. So sterling's got a lot of vulnerabilities there, unless we see a miraculous um, closing of the ranks in the Conservative Party and an improvement in the economic data. Understood. Mark, thank you very much for joining us.